Uh, we mentioned a while ago that last night, I think it was about 8.30 Eastern time, uh, there was a news conference with the astronauts who were still in the command module well above the Earth. And one of the recommendations, the crew was asked what recommendations it would make uh, for changing uh, flights or procedures in the future. And one of the things they suggested was that the period of actual outside the spacecraft operations on the surface of the moon, the thing they call EVA, or extravehicular activity, be extended. They were limited on this one to three and a half hours by schedule. They were extended to four hours in real time. The one on Apollo 11, I think, was only two and a half hours. They feel that a man, uh, given a chance for rest and food and water, can do a good eight-hour day of work uh, on the lunar surface with, with no strain. And they suggested that by extending that period, rather than having more periods of shorter duration, say three VAs of four hours each, maybe have one of eight and then later another of eight, that they can get more work done because they don't have to spend so much time getting into and out of all the suits and gear that uh, are connected with uh, that kind of activity. So that's a recommendation I'm sure will be given considerable weight by the mission planners in the future since the crew feels they can do it. Uh, we're still waiting for the phone call from President Nixon. We're going to return downrange to the Hornet for pictures where I believe the uh, command module itself, the Yankee Clipper, is about to be brought aboard or is in the process of being brought aboard the Hornet. You can see the men still riding it here. It's pretty self-explanatory. That green stuff in the back, if you're watching television in color, is the die marker uh, that helps them spot the, um, the thing from the air. And in its own way, this um, command module is as valuable to the um, people who plan these missions as the crew's briefing or debriefing. They will go over this thing inch by inch outside and inside and all the equipment that's in it to see how it has fared and see if any changes in design should be made. Frank, a while ago while you were talking about the possibility of lightning having struck the spacecraft, mm -hmm. on uh, Friday, I believe it was, when they were rendezvousing and Just going about the dock, yeah. through their docking procedure, uh, I believe it was Conrad from the uh, LEM as they were flying in formation there, he stopped the rendezvous procedure for a moment. He said he wanted to take a look at the umbilical. Now, this is an array of cables and plumbing and everything, which runs from the service module, the round, long structure on the back of the command module, to the command module. It's about two feet long, about six or eight inches high, and about 18 inches wide. And it's protected by a cover, and all the cabling and water and electricity and everything needed from the command module to the service module runs through that array and he said it was blackened or it looked like it was blackened and um, he went up they flew up uh, a few feet took some 16 millimeter pictures of it uh, the way the sun angle was he was not positive that it was actually a burn mark but they took some pictures and they'll bring those back and analyze them and um, uh, perhaps from that be able to determine more accurately exactly what happened there at launch. Mm -hmm. But that, I don't think we'll be able to sue you on this. No. Well, we'll be back in just a moment. Now it's time for a station break. NBC News will continue with its color coverage of Apollo 12 in a few moments after this pause for station identification. This is... These men aboard the Hornet in the South Pacific are towing 
And then it looks like what it is, a device not for this world. The command module of the Apollo 12 These men aboard the Hornet in the South Pacific are towing, and it looks like what it is, a device not for this world. The command module of the Apollo 12 toward the Hornet, where it will be brought aboard. Bobbing around in the blue waters, the men riding the flotation collars, the crew on deck hauling on the line to bring it near, I suspect, an elevator or a crane that will hoist it on board for minute and detailed study. Part of the post-flight analysis of the flight of Apollo 12. NBC News continues with its color coverage of Apollo 12, brought to you by Gulf Oil, producers of more and better energy from oil. And here once again is Frank McGee. Well, the thing that took them to the moon or to the vicinity of the moon and brought them back is bobbing around on the water. The crew, all three members, are on board the Hornet uh, inside their quarantine facility where <clears throat> Excuse me, within a few moments now, we expect they'll be receiving a telephone call from President Nixon in the White House. And it's our understanding that we will not be able to see the crew uh, during this call, but uh, that could be changed. Those things frequently are. And this is the, this is the trailer. I'm sure they don't like to have it called a trailer, but it, that's what it looks like. And they're inside. They have everything they need to survive in there. Food, water, place to sleep, place to bathe, medical facilities. And there they are. They've lowered the shade. Three astronauts. Senior Commander B, last clear here. On the left, Commander Conrad, Commander Gordon in the center, and Commander Bean on the right. And that phone call from the White House will be in momentarily. They are wearing their traditional baseball caps with scrambled eggs on the feet. Hello, sir. Commander? Commander Conrad here. Are you all three on? Yes, sir. We're all on the phone. Well, I'm just delighted to have this opportunity to welcome you back, and I only wish that uh, I could be out there for the splashdown. Uh, we all went with you on television. I, don't, I can't say that I followed every bit of it, but uh, I can assure you that millions here in the United States and around the world were watching. And uh, I uh, uh, am just tremendously proud, personally, and speaking also representing the American people of what you've done. Uh, as you know, before you took off, we talked on the phone that night, and I invited you and your wives to come to the White House for dinner. And I just want to be sure you can uh, make that date. Sir, we'll be there. Fine. Well, we'll expect to see you after you get out of quarantine. And now there's one other thing I think I should tell you that uh, I've noticed that you've been responsible for several firsts. You weren't the first on the moon, but uh, you were the, I think, uh, Commander Conrad, you were the first to sing from the moon, right? Right? I guess so, sir. That's right. And it was uh, the, also, uh, we've had the first moon quake as a result of uh, your flight and the first press conference from outer space. Uh, now, after all of those firsts, I think that uh, the nation wants some recognition, and I've been trying to think of what would be the best way to recognize you. And over these past 10 days, I've noticed that uh, Walter Cronkite and the other
other commentators are always referring to you as Commander Conrad, Commander Gordon, and Commander Bean. And uh, I, exercising my prerogative as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, have decided that you should be promoted and that from this day forth you shall be Captain Conrad and Captain Gordon and Captain Bean. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Thank you sir. We look forward to seeing you. See you. Yes, sir. We well, look forward to being here. Thank you very much, sir.